Catholic who never left BDA and a few things from this chapter. First, that referee made the worst decision in his life to be that at that moment, at that time with Corolla versus Hisoka because he's basically a punching bag. He's just a prop in that arena. And, you know, I was like, man, I'm not sure how I feel about this chapter. I'm not sure if I'm going to read it because I haven't read enough chapters before Dark Continent to know exactly what's going on yet. We go straight to Heaven's Arena and it's Corolla versus Hisoka. Like, we just leave the Dark Continent and I was like, oh shit, all right, I, I, I know about this. Hisoka versus Corolla. And this, my friends, is Hunter Hunter and the depth of the fights and how they break it down. It's like, it's so much, but it's so good. Ahsoka, he's been wanting to fight Krola for a long time, so he was basking in this. And it turns from just a have an arena match to a death match. They both agree to it, and then it goes and it starts, right? At first, Krolo has the upper hand because he takes control of the referee with his antenna and he has a remote and he, he shows Hisoka the remote, right? He shows him the remote and the antenna and how it works to make him wary of it to kind of throw him off his game. So the whole time, Hisoka is backpedaling, worrying about the antenna, how much controls he can send to it, how many commands he can make. And he's not even worried about attacking. He's on the defensive immediately and Krolo takes advantage of that. He attacks him and he is stopping him. He, like, he is literally stopping him because Hasoka is trying to think of all the variables and all the ways he can kind of outmaneuver Krolo because he says, if I just take the antenna out, if he can send one command, more than likely, he will be waiting for me to do that. So I don't know. And then Krolo jumps on that. So Krolo, I mean, they're both master strategists, but Krolo, I think Krolo, at the beginning of the fight, was superior. Of course, Hisoka, not to be outdone, uses bungee gum, and the referee that was all the way over there that got thrown out the way, he retracts him at max speed. He knocks Krolo away, but Krolo, being the guy he is, faints behind the referee, and now Hisoka's like, okay, so you're gonna use the referee as a shield and then attack me once, you know, once I attack? So he's like, I accept your challenge, Krolo, and he slices the referee, slices the referee open with, like, his card, but then it was a ran it was the explosion was weird and Krola reveals Sun and Moon. Apparently Sun and Moon is like a plus sign and a negative sign. And if they if he can place them on someone's body and if they touch for three to five seconds, it sets off an explosion that could obliterate people, apparently. Krolo now has this, and he was like, Oh man, he, he's not using his book. So Krolo acquired this 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 new technique in Meteor City and he said and Soka points out that Krolo has been running from him or taking the say you have to catch me first so that he can acquire more cards like Krolo his book is like uh, it has so many different abilities so Krolo has just been going collecting abilities he's he because he knows that Hosoka was gonna he wants to fight him so he's probably been going around trying to think of different strategies to, to defeat Hosoka so I know that you it's, it, it's it's crazy. What's also interesting is that they're both fighting differently. Hisoka is enjoying the fight, yes, but Krolo is fighting and he's fighting with style. He wants style points in the way he wins. So Hisoka was like, well, you're turning me off. But he was like, well, I still intend to win. But then he reveals another ability bookmark and bookmark is where he can use the abilities from the book even if it's closed while using the ability another ability even when it's open so he's using three abilities in one and then he even Hasoka points that out and he's like well it's four because the bookmark is actually from the book so do you understand how crazy that is he's using four abilities in one at one time it's like the mastery of his net abilities is just on an otherworldly level that he's like well I have more things to worry about and more you know limitations to worry about but I think it's pretty alright, and it's like, you know, you should be happy because you're the person, you're the one person I've had to use this many abilities against and they haven't died, so this fight is just getting started. I don't think we see the end of it because the end is someone dead. And I don't think you kill any of these characters right now, but Hunter Hunter, man, Hunter Hunter. Um, I, I, I want to read some more so I can release a video about the Dark Continent, wrapping everything together. A simplistic stuff, not not anything complicated that's going to confuse you. Like, oh, fuck, I don't want to too much dialogue. Something interesting, but simple. Because Hunter Hunter can get complicated sometimes. That that turns some people off. This chapter was mm, had some technical stuff to it, but amazing, amazing. But just let me know what you thought about the chapter. I thought it was. Really good. If you did, subscribe to the channel if you have not. That would be dope. Have a good day, people.